All right, so what we got here? Uh, our Bobcat T595 has been sitting all night, and so it's really important when machines have been sitting for a while and, and during the winter and the cold, let these machines warm up. Let them run five, 10 minutes, whatever it says to get up to safe operating temperature. Sure. So that these oils and stuff are really fluid and you're not blowing up hydro pumps and putting undue stress on your machines. Exactly. You don't want to have a cold flux capacitor out there. Yeah, you can't have that. Because that would not be, point. exactly. Guys, we're hanging out here with Caleb Almond today and with Almond Landscape. You guys know Caleb from Instagram. We got this whole job site going together. Check this out. Everything moving. I gotta get out of the way so I don't get ran over. All right, we're gonna jump inside. We'll show you guys this whole operation. We're gonna be talking about brick papers today. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys inside. All right guys, what's going on? It's Brian here and uh, I'm already cracking up. This is gonna be a really fun video. Check this out, special guest, Caleb Allman. What's up, brother? Hey man, what's going on? How are you? I'm good. Look at this guy, this is awesome. I've, uh, I've actually been at his house for about a couple hours now. Um, just really nice guy, uh, just very hospitable. But you know what? Today, we're gonna be talking about brick pavers. We're gonna be talking about doing a little bit of install work, um, some rookie mistakes, yep. some things to stay away from. And quite honestly, just show you guys, uh, Caleb Allman, if you guys follow Caleb on Instagram, uh, you are no stranger to seeing all the work that he does and all the fun that he gets to have. But for me personally, this is a selfish one. Uh, I wanna come down and just hang out with Caleb for the afternoon. Uh, I really like brick paver work. Uh, I really enjoy that side of the, the industry. I don't know if I've ever really done the work, so I don't know if I'll enjoy doing the work. We'll change that. Yeah, right, but uh, but I appreciate the finished product. So anyway, um, if people don't know you, let's give them a quick shout. So what's your background, what's your story, and just take it away, man. We're just here to hang out, have some fun. Well, thanks, dude. I appreciate you coming down. I really appreciate you taking the time to come down, check out our small operation. And yeah. uh, I'm Caleb Allman. Uh, I'm the operations manager. It was a fancy title for uh, uh, chief, I don't even know what, but <laughs> it's a it's a fancy title for a guy that still does everything. So sure. the uh, the main thing I do at my company, we're a landscape design build firm. Uh, we specialize in hardscape construction, landscape construction, uh, landscape design. Our uh, our main emphasis is uh, brick paper work and retaining walls. That's the main type of work that we do. I've been in landscape contracting for about 20 years now. I started right out of high school, just like seems like everybody else, just cutting grass with a single axle trailer and a walk behind mower. And I always wanted to get more into the construction into things and uh, landscape construction, green industry construction. And so we just co continually were growing and evolving our company into more of a landscape and green construction uh, type business. And, and we've, we're there now. All right, so here's the one thing that I, everybody needs to know. Is that where are you based out of? We're in Fair, beautiful Fairfield County, Ohio, Southeast Ohio. He's uh, in Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Brian's all maintenance is in Ohio, I have to admit it. There's only a few reasons I'd come to Ohio. Caleb Allman and Cedar Point, okay? No, I'm just having fun. But anyway, I got a Razzik because big Michigan State guy, Michigan fan, and you know, whatever, right? Talk so, to my foreman about that. He's the one with the beef. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, okay. So big high state guy. Heck no, man. He's a, he's a, he's a big dude. So yeah, I'm, gonna, nice. I'm a string bean. So <laughs> anyway, um, so this is really, this is really cool. A, a lot of you guys know that um, over the last few uh, weeks and months and years, I like to just showcase different parts of uh, the industry to you guys. Um, Caleb is, uh, for real, he's one of the, the nicest guys you'll ever meet. But on Instagram, he's got a huge following. And and in my opinion, one of the go-to guys, almost like one of the, the people that is probably the most well-respected that I could say on social media that is putting out brick paver uh, how-tos and helpful videos and just sharing this part of the business with you guys. So uh, it's really cool just for me to get to catch up with Caleb and, and see his operation and his outfit. Um, we're actually going to show you guys, like we were talking about earlier, uh, some rookie mistakes. A lot of you guys wanted to see uh, some fun parts of the business for the brick paver side of the industry, but Caleb said, well, let's talk about some rookie mistakes and some things that guys who are just trying to get into 
elements that this uh, part of the industry could really stay away from right. that could be some costly mistakes. So uh, before we do that though, because I'm a kid in a candy store, can we go walk around and show everybody your equipment? Absolutely. Because this is like some big Everybody fun. loves machines. Everybody likes big fun toys like this, right? All right, so take it away. What do we got here? We got your two main pieces of equipment. This is the Bobcat this is, Skid Steer. Yeah, this is our Bobcat. It's a T595 model. It weighs about 8,000 pounds. We bought it because the, the main thing about this machine is the, it was the smallest machine we could do that pick up the most amount of stuff that we have. So it's about an 8,000 pound machine, but it'll still pick up full skids of material, which was so important to us. We had to be able to pick up uh, full skids of pavers and retaining wall block and get them across site. And our old machine couldn't do that. So this thing saves a ton of labor for us, but it still isn't the biggest model and it's not the smallest. It was just right sized, And that's what we really uh, was important to us. 595, right? Yeah, T5, T5, uh, T595 stands for tracks. Tracks. So you can get an S595 and it'd have wheels. So it's skid. Oh. So tracked right. and skid. And tracks to us are very important. We wanted wide track for extra flotation across the property so we're not rutting the place all up and tearing up because the standard tracks are a little bit more narrow and this adds a lot of flotation. Nice. And uh, you can really tiptoe across properties. And we're on a lot of residential properties that we don't want to tear up anymore and we have to. I like it, man. Absolutely. So what have we got for attachments? Um, all we have for this thing is on a set of forks on it right now, again, which is super critical for picking up and moving the skid steer pallets or skid steer paper pallets across properties. Sure. Um, retaining wall block, you name it. Uh, a couple cool things on this thing. I, I didn't think we were going to be so great when we got it. It's got the power bobtat system, which is you don't have to get out of the cab to switch out to implements. Like you push a button in the cab and it unhooks and you don't have to get in and out of this thing. Nice. It's so handy. I. It's a it's an expensive add-on, but it actually saves a ton of labor you would never imagine. But it was it's one of the best things about this crazy machine. It's the little things, right? It is. It's it's nuts. I I always used to think that was a silly option. Then we had it as a demo. I'm like, yep, need this. There you so go. It's there crazy. You. I like it. I, I can dig it. And then what do we got over here? Do you want to talk us um, through? Right. Yeah. So right now, uh, it's a Cat 303.5 excavator. The 303.5, the 3.5 part means it's a three and a half ton machine, and all the excavators are based off their tonnage or their size. So a 10 ton excavator. Or or a three and a half ton excavator, whatever. That's what this one is, a three and a half ton excavator. We've got a 36 inch smooth bucket on it and 12 inch bucket and a 24 inch bucket. But we really like that 36 inch smooth bucket for cutting out patios and stuff like that because the teeth, if it had teeth on it, it would disturb more soil. This thing cuts out a nice clean cut and uh, we really find it handy and useful for this type of work. All right, he's also got access to the ditch witch as you guys have seen uh, on Instagram and this is just fun. Like a lot of you guys may not know, but I thoroughly enjoy like brick paper work. Um, there's a lot of big moving machinery back here. I want to make sure I don't get smoked, right? That'd be the end of Brian's law maintenance. But uh, you know, the biggest thing is I really appreciate like the end result of brick pavers, like uh, back patios are huge where I live. Um, the kind of uh, outdoor kitchen areas, you know, with the all the built-in uh, ranges and stuff like that. Really, really cool work. Um, so this is really fun for me, man. I get to hang out with Caleb Bauman and check all this stuff out. By the way, hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you do, tell Caleb, hey, great work. Thanks for all that he puts out on Instagram because he's a huge industry uh, resource and just a really nice guy. All right, let's get back into it. All right, so you got the ditch witch. Yeah, so this is an SK750. It's rated for about 750 pounds. It'll do a little more than that, but that's the way the manufacturer brings it. It's got his forks on it right now. This machine is a fantastic, all these mini skid steers are what they call them. This is a great starter level machine. If you just want to get into machines in your landscaping business, this is about $25,000. You want to get a set of forks for it, a tooth bucket and a smooth bucket, which we can show you. Um, this thing will take the place of two or three employees. This thing is amazing. It's a great tool. If I didn't have to have one of those to pick up the really heavy stuff, I'd have two of these. No kidding. But yeah, absolutely. This, this is the most handy piece of equipment I've ever purchased, dollar for dollar, pound for pound. I know my friend Brandon Boudreaux with Envision, he's looking to pick up uh, one of these maybe in the yeah, next year or two. You he won't regret it and he'll wonder, how did I get by without it, honestly? Sure. Yeah, that's, that's great, cool. super handy machine. Any of the brands, Vermeer, Toro, doesn't matter. Demo one of these, try them out, make sure it fits with your company, but you'll be amazed how much labor these things save you. It's incredible. One thing I wanted to do was just take a quick second. Um, we're gonna go show you guys, uh, once his guys are done making that uh, base over there, is uh, Caleb actually has a new training program out that um, he's just a huge resource to the industry. What, what's the website again? It's uh, howtoinstallpavers.net. Okay, cool. So howtoinstallpavers.net, if you guys are interested in learning more about that part of the industry and you wanna check out more of his program to help get you guys up to speed, you can check it out. We'll leave links in the description down below. Not here to overly promote that or plug that. It's just 
Um, it's just a really good resource. A lot of you guys have actually turned me on to uh, the training program because of how much you guys have gotten out of it. I know my friend Brandon bought it and said it was really, really good. Haven't personally used it, so I can't endorse it. But I will say this, uh, if I know anything uh, about Caleb and his uh, heart to give back and how he's running his company and to help you guys out, I'm sure it's gonna be really good. So check it out, linked in the description, but I think those guys are probably almost getting done over there. With, uh, with excavation, yep. Yeah. So this is why we like, uh, now this was roughed out because we're doing it fast. We're trying to make a short and concise video for you. But uh, that smooth bucket is why we like to have that on there is it gives you a uh, you know, more consistent cut across there and the teeth aren't ripping across, stirring up a bunch of loose material. On your paver patios, you want to make sure that you get all this loose material in here. Recompacting subsoil is really challenging to get it to the proper density. So uh, we want to do as little disturbance and get down to native virgin earth as best we can. So after that, we want to get all this, all this native stuff out of here. Native virgin earth. That's You've right. never heard stuff like that on my channel before. Well, I try to keep it clean here. That's why yeah. you got to have a professional. <laughs> the, I love uh, it, dude. <laughs> I mean, we just take it really seriously. That's all. I mean, at the end of the day, we're super passionate about doing a, the best job we can possibly do. Absolutely. And, uh, so we just totally dork out on this stuff, man. You, you'll have to cut this video off. You'll have to cut me off at some point because I'll keep telling you, like, <laughs> I don't like, uh, we want this more consistent cut out and stuff. Like I said, we're doing it fast for the video, so. No, this is good. You got four or five good tips? Absolutely. The main thing uh, that matters with good paver uh, patio or paver installation is compaction and slope are your two most important things. So you want your subsoils compacted properly, and then when you bring your base material in, it has to be compacted properly. A lot of people say they compact base properly, but the, the correct thing is, do you have the right size compaction equipment to compact the base material in thick enough lifts? So the big thing there is we want to make sure that we're getting that base material compacted properly with the right size machines, and then we want to make sure we're setting this whole thing to be at the proper slope. 2% is uh, the standard set by the ICPI, the Interlocking Concrete Pavement Institute, of, uh, for, for drainage. We want these pavers to slope at 2% or a quarter inch per foot so that this thing has uh, total shedding of water. Water's never gonna sit on this thing. Even if you have a minor deflection of like settling or anything, the, the thing's at a gentle enough slope that your drinks aren't spilling out, but water that lands on it is gonna run off, it's gonna keep it cleaner, it's gonna keep it from potholing or bird bathing, and just be, again, overall the best project we can make. I like it, man, absolutely. No, I really appreciate the education. This is good, this is There's really so good. There's so much more, Brian. I need like an hour and a half. I know, well, it's, almost, two like, hours, it's almost like you have a training program. <laughs> I know, right, well, that's, and I, it was two and a half hours long talking about just this stuff, so yeah, it's <laughs> Caleb, enough time. Caleb and I did a two and a half hour lunch. We're both long-winded, go figure, right? Yeah, really, right. <laughs> I love it. All right, so so the biggest uh, tip number one, right? It was compaction. Compaction. Absolutely. Subsoil. You want your soil to be well compacted. All this loose stuff out of here. Get the loose material out. Compact it. What do you Then got? the next thing is this geofabric. We use a, an eight ounce woven geotextile fabric. This is not for weed suppression. This is not to keep weeds from growing in your patio. This once this subsoil is compacted, this is for. And we're a little short here, but we'll make it work. This is for strength of this, uh, this is like rebar for dirt almost, if you will. What rebar does, for dirt, I yeah, like right? that. Yeah, I like it. That's good. It separates the base material we're about to put in here from the native soil below. So there's not gonna be any intermigration of the materials. And then also it adds strength to it. So it's gonna, uh, any weak soils, it's gonna kind of bridge. All these little fibers are locking hands like this and so any weak spot over here is going to compensate a little bit with this geofabric we like wanted it. to wrap up all the sides and then we're going to put our base material down in here okay gotcha so what would this be called step two this is uh this is the installation of your geofabric installation of geofabric all yep. right most guys don't do this or don't um, do it as well a lot of people think it's for that's a crazy thing a lot of people do this they think it's to prevent weeds we're putting material on top of this that weeds would still grow in, so it's not for weed prevention. Sure. It's for separation of base and soil, and uh, for strength, and strengthening your subsoils and your base material. All right, I like it. Looking good, man. So yeah, it should wrap up all sides. We cut a little short, we're in a big hurry. Yep. But it should wrap up all sides, and then we're gonna fill this thing with base. All right, what do we got, brother? This is a jumping jack compactor, and it's gonna work best to compact clay, 
uh, clay type soils. The clay soils need a ramming and force type compaction for clay soils. If you got heavy clay, this thing is what's going to compact your uh, subsoils best. The next best thing we're bringing over right now. So uh, it just depends on what your subsoils are like. And then for your base, you're almost always going to need vibratory uh, compaction equipment. Makes sense. All right. All right, what do we got here now? This is a reversible vibratory plate compactor. This model here has 12,000 pounds of centrifugal force, which is how vibratory compaction equipment is measured in its centrifugal force, uh, force pounds. So this thing works fantastic for doing uh, uh, angular base so uh stuff like anything your highways and roads are made out of okay um so because it vibrates it's huge this thing weighs 900 pounds so if you can imagine the force this thing's putting down Jeez. this is the best thing to compact your base with once you get to your your aggregates um and we'll show actually a couple different types of aggregates that we're going to use as base sure um this is we're very proud to be one of the it, to own this. Nobody around our area owns one of these. So I, we believe that sets us apart in our construction techniques uh, is having such a big compactor. It does such a superior job because compaction and drainage are two of the most important things about uh, a successful project. So we're very proud to have this. Um, the, the biggest thing about this, and this is like the number one mistake probably as far as when it comes to compaction, is this thing you can put down anywhere from eight to 10 inches of base at one time and compact it all and compact it properly. If you got a little compactor, which is like this little guy sitting on a truck over here about the size of a push mower, yep. you can only put down about an inch and a half of base at a time mm. and compact it properly. So you've got to raise it up in lifts. You can't do like six inches of base at one time and you know it won't compact all the way through. This thing will compact all the way through. So it's faster. It's an expensive machine, but it speeds up our time of uh, insulation on the base. So I like uh, it. It's it's so critical to us, and we're so proud to own one of these. That's good, man. I like it. Well, you got to yeah. take pride in what you do, and like you said, the right tool always makes the job that much easier, absolute, right? It's speed and efficiency is is absolute paramount in uh, in a construction or service base. It, it doesn't matter what you, if you're cooking pizzas. It doesn't matter. <laughs> speed and production, productivity, and efficiency is absolutely paramount. That's to why success. that's why I like Jimmy John's, right? They're freaky fast. Freaky fast. Freaky all right. Fast. <laughs> so the, the unofficial food for uh, all yeah, contractors. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> that's the, awesome. uh, so yeah, dude, that's totally that. And then this little guy here is what most, this little thing is what most guys have. And we started out and had one of these for years. Sure. This thing only pumps out about 3,300 centrifugal pounds of force. So it's little, but you can, like I said, you can use these for all your installs, even compact your subsoils. It's not ideal. And it's good for residential pedestrian grade patios. Um, but you know, you know, you can only compact about an inch of base at a time, inch and a half of base at a time. Gotcha. So you got to do it. You know, you've got to do almost maybe six lifts to get to six inches of thickness of base, mm. as opposed to the big boy. You can do it all in one, all in one thing. And you do, you run these things, uh, you know, across your base like this, and then you go back across like this, and maybe one more at a forty-five degree angle, almost like you're striping a yard three ways. Gotcha. Go okay, ahead. so this is like futuristic technology in our world. All right. God, you know, God help us. But this is called open graded stone or clear stone, three-quarter clear. There's no fine in it and this is becoming a very prevalent method of construction for paver patios and retaining walls we do a lot of our installs on this stuff now it requires less compaction when it's dumped in the bucket it's about at 95 percent compaction so you just do a little bit to interlock it and get it uh, what they call consolidated and okay. you've got a base material as opposed to another base i'll show you here it needs a ton of compaction but it has no fines it's just all this open graded angular stone by the way is what's important because it, it locks together because it's angular okay so uh if this were like this is called 57 stone number 57 stone which is an ASTM standard. If it were all round, it'd be like marbles and it wouldn't make good base material. Oh. But the angular end of it, so whatever part of the country you're in, be it you have you know decomposed granite or whatever, this stuff, you know, being clear angular is what you need for a, huh. for a type of base. One caveat to that is, you can see here we've got this area lowered. What this stuff creates essentially is a French drain. It's gonna hold water. So you need to make sure you always have a way for water to escape out of this thing so it doesn't build up and puddle up here. Or if that's the foundation of a home, God forbid, you do not want to have water, you know, pulling up against the foundation. So it always has to have a way for the water to get out of that base layer. So Good to know. that's that. Brian, I'll show you a uh, dense graded base and then we'll actually get something done maybe. <laughs> Okay, so this is dense. Brian's like overwhelmed, so I'm like going nuts, so bear with me. This is dense graded base. In other words, it has fines in it. This is like, in Ohio, it's called AST, it's, uh, ASTM 411. It's number 411 limestone. So you can see all the little the little uh, you know fine particles in there. This stuff will compact. It's not quite wet enough, 
but it'll you know it'll make a ball so that's that's why it needs that vibratory compaction so you can see this stone here takes requires very little compaction which is why it's so much of a faster install we can use this little plate compactor run that over at one time to get it uh, consolidated and we're good to go like and that's it. why it's so much faster than the dense graded base which retire, requires a ton of compaction all right well you know what it sounds like oh. to me the uh first off you got to catch your breath because <laughs> we're we're installing the world's worst patio yeah in five this is really thrown together bad this is <laughs> this driving is, me crazy this whole video is like taking 20 minutes to put together because we're just we're just literally making stuff up but I, i'm making stuff up he needs to be like four hours long he you got knows, that kind of time today no i, I don't uh. he knows what he's doing but i i just i'm a kid in a candy store i see moving things and i just in diesel fuel and i just get excited Squirrel. you know yeah and so and our brains are very similar but um I had a point, but I, I, don't, I don't have a point anymore. But, um, oh, no, I was going to say this stone. Do you know what this stone is called, actually, back at home? What is it called? It's called Game Changer. Ah, yes, the, it is. It <laughs> truly is, man. The official, is. the official overly used word of 2018 and 2019 is Game Changer. Next level, too. That word drives me crazy. Oh, next level. Next level the patio next, base. Next level Game Changer. Yes. <laughs> next level Game Changer. <laughs> All right, so what are we at in the next step, brother? Okay, so now we've got, uh, we've got this base, uh, this aggregate compacted or consolidated with a little compactor. We're going to set on screed bars here it's really important and we're planning on when we're doing all the logistics for this job knowing where our finish elevation of pavers is going to end up right because we don't want it to be too tall into the door too short or not meet up with other things on site so all that has been done yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is our these are screed rails for our setting bed so we're going to take uh, some number nine limestone which is again an open graded grit you cannot use sand over this open graded stone because you can imagine it's just going to wash right through it right sure sure so we're going to uh, set these things to the proper two percent pitch all mindful of like where we want that end to be x it's going to be higher versus this end which is going to be lower so we're going to set these things in here with uh, dead blow hammers get them just right and all reflective of where we want these uh, bases or i'm sorry these these top of pavers to match up with and we're going to screed this stuff out and we're going to lay some paper I like it, man. I like it. Gosh, you like actually know what you're doing. Dude, I don't know. It's all I've done for like 15 years, so I don't know. Did I get too excited about it? I cut grass, man. It's just just keep the lines straight. I you know what I mean? Four hours. You got four hours? Uh, maybe I'll come back and watch uh, <laughs> University of Michigan beat Ohio State there on a football okay, game. There we go. Bo's your man for that. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take the special tool. Again, efficiency. It's beats being on your knees with a two by four or whatever. We're on our feet still, and we just pull this stuff and rake it out. And uh, the guys will be like kind of following along, watching where we're gonna come up short. And again, just just like Keith's doing there, and he's reading the head. You know, we're gonna be a little short there, so he just kind of goes ahead and watches us get our uh, our base right in the center there. Keith. Thank you, buddy. So we just go through and pull this thing. Bam, we're good. We're gonna pull those screed bars and uh, fill those in, and now we're gonna be ready to lay some paper. Look at that. That's awesome. Okay, so these are number nines. And, and again, based on the area you're in, you might only have access to number eight clean stone. Again, angular, so it's a little bit bigger. You know, these nines are, you can see how little these nines are? Eights. So it's just all based off ASTM standards, American Society for Testing Materials, something like that. But they write the standards for everything. Standards for this lens on this camera, standards for hardness and block, the rubber on your tires. ASTM writes the standards for everything. So if you ever have a question like, does this meet a certain standard, just look up ASTM standards. Nerd alert. I like it. I like oh. it. Gosh, it's a chock full of wisdom. Like, can I can I, I buy your wisdom, brain? Actually. I need like Matrix and download your brain yeah. into my brain. Okay, so we've got our, uh, you know, course of our excavation done, our subsoil is compacted, our geofabric's in. We've got this six inch layer of open graded uh, clean stone in there for our base. Now we've got this one inch layer of a uh, bedding material. Now on traditional dense graded base on old, old style paper patios, uh, it was, you'll use sand for this. But now again, this open graded grid, it's faster, it's easier to work with. Uh, it's a very progressive technique, believe it or not. But you know, the thing is like, the railroads, all the railroads you see in a country were built on open graded stone, just a larger stone, like a number two stone. Yeah. And the paver industry just now getting around like, hey, that's not a bad idea, let's do that. <laughs> so like, sure. um, so you know, it's very progressive, uh, you know, technique really. So, but the biggest thing is that water. So you can see like this whole thing will hold water. Sure. And it's the one thing I tell everybody is like, in most places in the country, everybody has clay. Yeah. So this, we just dug a pond essentially and filled it with some gravel. So we're gonna need to, um, dig a pipe out or dig a trench out of there and bury a pipe so any water gets in here can exfiltrate out or okay. drain out. That's the biggest thing with these open graded stone projects. I, I can't stress that enough. Make sure this thing drains out. Gotcha. Right now, Britt's laying out a soldier, what's called a, a actually, this is a sailor course. So, soldier, Britt, show me a soldier real quick. So, that is laying soldier when you lay them side to side in like that on these four by eights. That's considered soldier. The other portion here closer is called a sailor course. All right. And so that's also called banding. So we're going to band the paper field like that. 
and uh and you explain all this in the training program right dude it goes it goes for two and a half hours yeah like, what are we trying to condense this into only four hours yeah <laughs> so um yeah so we cover all that stuff yeah absolutely. dude that's awesome and actually i talk a little slower right barely i love it dude <sighs> all right what do we got brother okay so we've got a, just a few papers laid out here you know depending on the manufacturer and whoever you're buying papers from you know follow their install instructions and all that stuff and how the pattern goes the, the big one of the big main rules of thumb is like you want to not have like long running lines or seams if it's a like an ashlar style pattern or whatever so like this thing here we want to be sure to always break up these lines uh you know so it's not just running on forever so like this this joint stops here and it's broken up and then continues on that way so you always want these joints to be broken up as much as you can so it doesn't get like separated by your eye when you look at it gotcha makes sense yep. makes sense well, what's this tool right here what do you okay, got here this is a this is a pneumatic lifter and it runs off a of compressed air whoa and uh, i had the exhaust right in my ear there so <laughs> But, uh, uh, which is one of the reasons and that didn't do me good there, but why we're so big on safety gear, for, you know, personal protective equipment. I like um, it. Helmets or hard hats might be a little overkill on a job like this, but for the most part, we're getting into the habit of wearing them on everything we do anymore. It's just not worth it. It looks yep. uber professional, but it's uber safe, and we're big on that. When you got guys that are uh, on payroll and you've got workers' comp and stuff like that, you need to be as safe as you can with your people. So we're huge on that. All the high vis stuff, safety stuff, we're big on it. So, so like this thing is pneumatic, it runs off of air, runs off a of compressor on a truck, uh, but it'll pick up pavers, and it makes placing these things so easy. Instead of setting this thing down with your fingertips and tearing up your fingertips, we're now pulling papers right off the top. And setting them right in place. And we're not having to break our backs. And wow. Bend, you know, we're not bending over like that. We're staying on our feet. Again, just like we're screening, we're staying on our feet and placing things like we should. So we can come over this. Oh, the, the compressor hasn't been running real long, so hopefully it runs, uh, hopefully it does as well enough. Just like that. Now you see I laid this, we got this long line right here. I'm probably gonna interrupt this. I'm gonna pick this one back up and lay like a short or a, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this line. I just don't like how this is, but you wanna avoid this long line that we're making here. So we're, I'm gonna shift this around a little bit. Sure. Um, but uh, those are the things you wanna eyeball as you're laying these in and, and just making sure you're, you're staying close and roughly uh, uh, approximate to the pattern that the uh, the specifier or that is specified, you know, in the product, right? So that's the big thing. But these we're mechanizing any way we possibly can, as fast as we can afford it, to save our guys' backs, to save time, and uh, and honestly, really, it's about the ergonomics. The the more productive your guys can be with less labor, the longer they can work, and that's so such a big deal. Because when it's a hundred, yeah, it's another throw this down. When it's 100 degrees out and you guys might only get four hours of production, if you mechanize, they might get six hours of production out of that hot, horrible day. Right. So mechanization is everything. Why we have all these machines, tools, we're trying to mechanize and take the labor out of the equation as much as we can. So now we're ready for edging restraint. And this is a really critical part. This, the edge is always gonna be the weakest part of a segmental or an interlocking system like this. So edge restraint is really important. We do a couple different systems. We do, uh, we'll actually do a mortared concrete edge or a, you know, a troweled concrete edge. We're actually up some concrete with fiber or rebar and we'll make a little edging in here to hold this in this lateral pressure it'll hold this in and we'll get this back filled with soil and all that and it'll hold in just fine uh, with this uh, we got a new product we're using and uh, it's a an edging specifically made for open graded stone like this but what you do be it uh, whatever system you're using you still need to take uh, a shovel or a finishing trowel and you're just gonna go through and you're gonna peel back that bedding material and get down to your base all right and we're gonna go down through there just like this Fast forward. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're gonna take this edging and you can use on your dense graded bases like a plastic edging. Again, this is a special type of edging here. This is made by Pave Tool and it's a special, they call it hybrid edging. It's got holes here for spikes for dense graded base or these special wedges which are gonna hold in that open graded stone bed. So this, because the surface area of this spike or this, you know, whatever you wanna call this thing, it's gonna bite into this open graded stone batter and give us a stronger edge than if we just use spikes so, so again labor saving we're huge on that so uh be it we're driving spikes or whatever uh demolition hammer like this or electric hammer whatever you want to call it uh to drive spikes or to drive these things we're trying to save labor so instead of uh, swinging a four pound hammer all afternoon we're going to take this thing in drive them in just like that. 
All right, so the next part, once we got our edging in, um, you know, having having this thing filled up, we never want, or ideally, we don't want our, our uh, soils to come up over this, especially depending on what way it's draining. We want our soils to be a little bit lower, come up pretty much flush like this and out. Take your foot and compress it in or whatever you need to do. Let me get your soils up flush or mulch or a bed or whatever you're gonna have up against here. But ideally, you know, getting some material up to here is good. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put polymeric lo joint locking sand in here. So we like to use a polymeric sand. And what that is, it's a special kind of sand that has uh, polymers in it that lock and engage these joints once it's activated with water. So we're gonna sweep that onto these, uh, onto the pavers. We're going to run our plate compactor over it. And what that plate compactor does, that little one, a little 3,000 pounder, uh, you know, 3,000 pounds centrifugal force. What it does is it consolidates and interlocks these pavers into the setting bed below it. So we've got good true interlock. And then we're gonna spray it down with a little misting of water so that we activate those polymers in that sand, let it uh, harden up over a couple hours, and the surface is ready to use, which is one of the greatest things about pavers is as soon as it's done, it's ready for use. It doesn't have to cure, it doesn't have to dry, it doesn't have to do anything. It's ready for use immediately. All right, so that is the uh, official uh, best worst patio of the uh, of the 2019 yeah. season. We're having we're having fun here. Um, Caleb wanted to go through a lot of uh, like I said, rookie mistakes and just tips with you guys. Um, you got some closing thoughts though you wanted to share with yeah. uh, with no, you know number one is that. This isn't like just something you can just whip together in 10 seconds. You have a no. lot, lot of education, really good guys putting this whole program together for you um, with the brick pavers, I should say. So you guys know what you're doing and it looks really good, but this takes a lot of education. Yeah, I, the biggest thing is going into it and there's, there's tons of free resources out there too. I highly recommend if you wanna get into paver work, look up the ICPI, the Interlocking Concrete Pavement Institute. They write all the specs, they have free downloads as far as their training manuals and their specifications for how to build these things properly. Not just our resource, check out the ICPI. I'm a huge advocate for that. Um, and then YouTube, I mean, there's there's resources out the wazoo on YouTube. Some good, some not so good. So you gotta get a broad consensus, but the main thing is study the ICPI manual. That will set you on a right course, and then you can elaborate uh, from there, and nothing beats. You know, if you wanna do this for hire, go build a little five by five like we're doing at your grandma's house or wherever and get some practice. Talk to a dealer. They'll hook you up some complimentary materials. I'm sure of it. If they're a smart dealer and they know and they see you as a potential big contractor down the road or a big client, they're gonna comp you some material. So don't hesitate to ask. Get some free stuff, materials, and build your own. Oh, <laughs> by the way, we're having fun here. Oh man, little, this is awesome. Little transition. I've never done something so fast in my life. We got the peanut gallery heckling. <laughs> oh, hecklers for sure. <laughs> Dude, we're having a good time. And they're being nice because you're here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We all have a usually throw stuff at me. Oh my god. All right. So, so uh, by the way, quick recap for the for the tips. So yeah, what was your four or five points, just so people know as well? The biggest thing is for, for people like me. Sure. The biggest thing is compaction. Compaction of your subsoils. Compaction of your base materials and then slope making sure this thing is going to drain properly okay cool that's the big those are the two biggest things right that the, the you've and seen that people make mistakes absolutely on. yeah compact actually and if bar none any compaction is it compaction is the biggest thing study that icpi cool. manual you'll be golden <laughs> all right so we're gonna cut it right here this is a really good time i've actually been hanging out with caleb and uh, his, his beautiful wife Brittany, like for like last five or six hours and other guys everybody here has been really really nice um if you guys really uh, enjoyed all this and you want to follow more about uh what caleb's doing like day to day follow him up on instagram uh he tears it up there a lot of Instagram stories he's always connecting with folks too that's really cool that he always answers DMs and all that stuff so if you do have questions hit him up on Instagram I know he's always available but hey thanks so much for having me over dude super appreciate I wish it I was cool enough to know how to do that smooth like let's, let's do you see. go down or up like that like, I don't blow it up dude, I like bricks all day I don't know. <laughs> Ohio man gotta love it <laughs> all right we're over now we'll catch up with you guys on the next one thanks guys